What's going on, dudes and dudettes? Welcome to Conspiracy Corner Podcast. This is Abe, your host. Um, I got about 30 minutes, so this will be kind of a, a shorter episode, obviously. Um, I want to get into some frequent news. What's been going on lately? So... Apparently, Louisiana has passed a law to have the Ten Commandments up in schools. I don't like that. I don't like that. To cut to the chase, I don't like that. Um, I am a firm believer in separation of church and state. And... I believe that the school would fall under the state. Um, It's an institution. It's a government building. Um, Unless you're going to a Christian school or Catholic school, it does not belong there. And I'm going to lose a lot of people and I don't care. I've already told you I'm anti-Christian, um, and at the end of the day, I'm a constitutionalist. Uh, constitution first, man. That's what I care about. Um, and even then, I'm, I'm slightly relaxed as far as, like, amendments and things like that, like, uh, slavery, not cool, you know? I support Lincoln and the Union and what happened during the Civil War as far as what Lincoln did. Um, Stuff like that. And he wasn't perfect. We can do a whole episode on how Lincoln was not the hero that they say he was. That's a whole nother rabbit hole. Um, There's going to be a response. And... I'm not super big on predictions with this channel, um, but I do make predictions every now and then. I can guarantee you, I'm not a betting man because I have too many bad habits. Um, And one of the bad habits that I purposely did not introduce into my life is gambling. I gamble here and there on horses once in a blue moon. And I usually win. Um, I've actually won like 300 bucks on horses. I usually win. I just get a feeling. Um, Because I'm a fortune teller. But, uh... I can bet that the Satanic Temple is going to respond to this. Because they always do. And once again, I'm going to piss off listeners. But I support the Satanic Temple. Do I agree with the Satanic literature as far as the Satanic Bible written by Anton LaVey? Do I agree with that 100%? No. But I actually philosophically, I would say I identify Satanically with a lot of their belief system. I'd say about 90%. The parts where they lose me is like the atheism aspect of it. Because I know that actually surprises like a lot of ignorant people who are too scared to study Satanism. They're like, uh, well, Satanists worship Satan. And it's like, no, they don't. They use him as a symbol. Um, they don't even believe in Satan, like actual Satanism, like as far as like church of Satan, satanic temple. Um, if anything, like they fall more into scientism, which is, I never really had a beef with science until the whole virus pandemic thing. And I noticed this trend of trust the science. Trust the science became their mantra. 
which scientifically like you're never supposed to just trust the science the whole point of science is like experimenting and failing with experiments or succeeding with experiments and like trial and error um, you're not supposed to just blindly trust it it's actually trust the science is probably one of the most unscientific things you could say um, makes no sense actually <laughs> but we all know we're in clown world and no sense makes sense as Charles Manson would say I don't think this is cool man I really don't think this is cool uh, I don't think it belongs in school and if they're gonna pass a law to make it to where they're allowed to just put the Ten Commandments in school, then the Satanic Temple will respond, which I'm cool with, you know. Um, I went to Garrett County High School in this little bumfuck Egypt town of Lancaster, Kentucky. And I remember I moved here probably like 2008 or something like that. And I came from uh, Florida. I think it was Hernando County High School. It's been so long. I'm pretty sure it was Hernando County High School. Um, I don't even remember our mascot or nothing. I only went there for like one or two years tops. But uh, we didn't have this shit down in Florida. This whole shove Jesus down your throat. And I don't think it belongs. There is a time and place for Christianity, and that would be a church. Or at home, if your parents are Christians, and they force you, like my parents forced me to read the Bible every day after school. I've read the Bible six times cover to cover. And, uh... I'm not saying woe is me, woe is me, because actually the older I've gotten, I actually uh, am glad that my father made me do that, because uh, it makes it so much fucking easier to debate dumb Christians, because uh, I would say sadly, but it's actually not sadly, um, if, if you're a Christian and you want to stay ignorant and not even read God's word if you literally believe that is God's word and you don't even have the curiosity to read it um, that works in my favor because I know it like the back of my hand um, and I can debate you and just destroy you in debates to me it's fun I love it I love ignorance in people I love people who say I don't read and I love people who are say they're Christian but never read the Bible because it's like I know the Bible and I can bring up Bible verses and shit and they go that's not in there and then I go pull out your phone Google it and then they Google it and they're like oh, 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 oh. you know <laughs> I love destroying Christians in debates um Speaking of debates, Jacob Israel, he, he wants to do a debate. He's actually put out a challenge during a video that he wants to debate someone. I think I'm going to accept it, but I, I want to make a whole episode about it. Um, I don't want to spoil too much because I'm probably going to do a whole episode on it or at least a segment of an episode on debating Jacob Israel. If we got time, we might get into it during this episode. Who knows? Um, maybe towards the end or something. I only got 30 minutes, so. Yeah, I think there's a time and a place for religion. I mean, you have churches. You have um, your house if your parents are Christian. I don't think it belongs in a school. I really don't. And I used to be a father. I'm not going to get into all the nastiness of a broken home and divorce and 
court proceedings and I'm not going to get into all that shit. Maybe one day. I don't know. That'll be something maybe I'll do an episode on when I'm like an old man and dying. You know, I might just get into just that darkness. That darker chapter of my life. Um, but I always had the mindset of, with my child, that we would raise her, for one, we would raise her to question everything. Um, and we would teach her, because obviously she would have to go to public school. We tried to have my wife at the time stay home. But with this economy, like, we lasted maybe, maybe like, a month, and our money just fucking ran, ran out. And sad thing is, is, like, that shows you how bad the economy was getting. Because I remember being a breadwinner at, let's see, Stella was born 2013. So 2013, 2014... 15, I can't remember when I divorced my first wife, but I was a breadwinner, bartending and serving at Beaumont Inn, six days a week, three doubles a week, during my first marriage, and I was a father, and my ex-wife, she didn't work, um, uh, I got her pregnant on purpose. It wasn't an accident. Um, turns out she was actually pregnant before we even started trying. So that's a whole nother thing because she was obsessive about wanting a baby. So I think that she stopped taking birth control and was trying to tie me up before I agreed to having a baby with her. Um, cause we actually had a lot of arguments. I didn't want a baby. I wanted a baby later in life, like my 30s, you know. That's when I wanted to have a baby, but she didn't want to. Uh, she wanted one right out the gate. Which, I mean, I'm kind of 50-50 on that, you know. Like, I kind of get it because that's when you have the most energy because you're younger. Um, so you can sit there and, like, work harder, work more. Um, like I said, I was doing six days a week, three doubles a week. Every, every week. I was working my fingers to the bone to keep the ship afloat. And on the side, I was like scrapping metal, um, bootlegging tobacco, bootlegging alcohol. I can say it now because I think the, I don't think I can get arrested for that. That was so long ago. I think, what is it? Uh, I forget the law of like, uh, I forget it, but you know, I, I was making ends meet. Um, so I kind of get it. Like having children earlier in life, it, it makes more sense. Biologically, I think that's your time clock that your natural time clock that you should have children earlier in life that way too. Like by the time they turn 18, you, you're still young enough to where you could still go out and have fun. And hopefully by then you're financially stable enough that you can go, go on vacations, go on cruises, you know, you can still enjoy life. You know, you can still go to a bar and have a glass of wine with dinner. Like, and it's not going to be, you're not going to be some old man with a cane, you know? Um, but raising our child, me and my ex-wife, we butted heads because towards the end of our relationship, she was a super bad alcoholic and she kept wanting to become a Christian. And I told her, I'm like, I'm fine with you becoming a Christian. That's your spiritual path. But I said, I told her what Christianity is like there's certain things in the bedroom we can't do anymore because it's a sin you can't keep drinking because it's a sin 
um, you have to obey me now. <laughs> like there's all sorts of rules that you can't just be like, I'm a Christian and then not follow any of the rules in the Bible. I mean, there's people who do it, which it cracks me up. And I'm not going to lie. I don't tell it to their face, but I tell my wife about it. I'm like, yeah, so-and-so says they're a Christian, but like they've got tattoos. They do drugs, you know, they go home and fuck their wife up the butt. And like, they're not a fucking Christian. They say they're a Christian, but they're not a fucking Christian, dude. Like they're using it almost as like convenience. Like, Oh, I don't want to go to hell, so I believe in Jesus and I, I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to follow any of the fucking rules. It blows my mind. Because I don't have that attitude. Like, I was trying out different things. Like, I, I landed on occultism, but I, I tried out, like, uh, Rastafari for a little bit. And that was the reason I stopped being a Rasta was... There was certain things that I didn't like about it. And I'm like, well, if I don't like this and I'm not going to change to fit into this, I'm not going to be a Rasta. You know, I'm not going to be a part of this. Um, but yeah, like, so we struggle with that because she wanted to raise our child Christian. And I said, no, we're not going to do that. And we used to butt heads and fight about it all the time, you know. And uh, people go, well, why, why wouldn't you raise your child as a Christian? And it's like, I was raised as a Christian. I plan on doing an episode on my upbringing as a Christian. And honestly, it fucked me up. Um, I was a preacher's kid. It messed me up. Like, they tried to control me. They would cut my hair, make me wear dorky clothes, like... Um, I was a punk at the time. I couldn't listen to, I couldn't be myself like at all. Everything I wanted to listen to. No, you're not allowed to listen to it. That's evil. That's dark. That's devil. Oh, you want to dress like this? Too bad. Oh, you want to wear this? Too bad. Oh, you want to grow your hair? No, you can't. You're a preacher's kid. And I kept explaining to them like, that's your path. This is not my path. Well, you're in my house. You're going to follow my path. And it's like, okay. And my advice to parents, man, is you can raise your kid like that, but then look at me. They're going to turn out like me. Do you want your kid being a 32-year-old punk um, who experimented with drugs growing up, hard drugs, bad drugs they shouldn't experiment with? Because when you tell someone that everything is evil... And then they try something like marijuana. This is why, here we go. This is why marijuana becomes like a, a gateway drug. Because when you're told that every drug is bad, every drug is evil. And then you try marijuana, which has its negative side effects. But for the most part, let's be straight. Marijuana is pretty much harmless. So when you're told that every drug is evil and then you try marijuana or you try a couple beers and it's not the end of the world that makes you think well if this was a lie if they if beer was a lie if marijuana was a lie that means that everything's a lie as far as drugs so that that becomes your logic so I went buck wild trying everything I could get my hands on. I obviously knew that like meth, crack, heroin, I would never try that shit. But I mean, I was trying some dangerous shit like fucking spice, like that illegal weed, potpourri or whatever. <coughs> the stuff that was like killing people. <coughs> I was trying pills. I got on cough medicine pretty bad at a certain phase in my life where I was chugging cough medicine and literally became like a demon. It makes you just go, oh, well, if they lied about this, they lied about everything. Um, I went through a wild phase, man, you know, 
And I, I feel bad for what I did to my family at the time. But at the same time, you know, my mom's like, you were so sweet as a child and you became so evil. And she still brings up my past, which cracks me up. And it's like, dude, I've changed. Like, but you still bring up shit that I did in high school. Like, I'm 32 years old now, dude. Like. Sorry, not sorry. I've already said sorry enough times that I, I can't sit here and apologize for something that happened in 2010. You know, um, that's my mom for you. But I wanted to, and actually, I actually, when I married my second wife, when me and my first wife split up, um, me and my second wife, like, we have our spiritual differences, but for the most part, we are on the same page with like 90% of everything. And for the most part, until she starts getting angry and excited and losing her temper, for the most part, we're like uh, on the same wavelength. And I told her the situation of what I had been through with my first wife, that she wanted to raise our child Christian. And I'm like, I didn't want to do that. Um, and people will say, well, why don't you want to do that? There's good morals in Christianity. And it's like, there are good morals in Christianity, but there's also a shit ton of fucked up shit in the Bible. I mean, if you want me to be quite frank, I think the Bible is probably one of the most deplorable, disgusting books ever written. I think it's caused more harm than good. Um, if it was wiped off the face of the earth, I would not shed a tear. Aeon of Horus, baby. But... And I even had like family members. I argued with my mom about it. I argued with my oldest brother about it. I, for some reason, people did not understand that you can have morals by your parents teaching you morals without a book. You don't need a sky daddy to be a good person. And I explained that to my daughter raising her of like do as I say this is what good is this is what bad is um this is how we act and she's honestly she was always a super well behaved kid like she had her little rotten moments here and there which every kid does but I didn't need to tell her that if you don't do this or if you do do this you're going to hell I didn't need to bring up hell at all. I never even wanted to bring up the concept of hell. And she would ask, you know, why Why do we do this? Or why do we have to do this? And I say, because it's the right thing to do. I don't need some book written by some ancient Jew that lived in a cave thousands of years ago to instill morals into my child. You just do certain things because it's it's nice. It makes it makes people feel good. Um, it makes the world a better place. I always tried to instill that with her of like, every day your mission should be how can I make the world a better place today? Make it better place today than it better than it was yesterday. That and I think that should be what everybody does first thing in the morning. How can I succeed today? How can I make as much money for my family today? How can I help if I see someone that needs help? Can I give them a dollar? Can I buy them food? Can I, oh, there's somebody with a flat tire on the side of the road? Oh, I woke up early today. I ain't gotta be at work for another hour. I should stop and try to help them change that tire. Shit like that, dude. People go, oh, well, you must be a Christian. No. I'm just a good person. And honestly, overall, I would say I am a good person. I'm not a shitty person. I can be a shitty person. I'm not perfect. But I don't need a sky daddy to do things that are good. I remember one time I was sitting in... 
the car with my mom or no I, yeah I was sitting in the car driving I was driving and this was when I was living with my mom because I was going through a divorce and uh, I had let go of my old former house that I was supposed to be living in with my first wife and I was gonna get an apartment because the house was falling apart it was just dude that house every time I would fix something something else would break I just literally could not afford it and it was just falling apart like black mold started growing in certain areas um the AC completely went out like my ex-wife busted out a window because she's a fucking psychopath uh, there was a plumbing issue underneath the house like every time I would fix something something else would break and I, I just couldn't afford it I was the only one working it sucked um, electric bill was like $300 a month like every month because we lived out in the middle of nowhere it was just insane But, uh, oh, I was living with my mom and we were stopping by McDonald's and I was paying with cash because I was a bartender at the time and I would always donate my change to the Ronald McDonald house. And my mom was like, oh, that's good. And I'm like, what? And she's like, I knew I raised a good Christian boy. Like we raised you right. Like, I'm glad you're still a Christian and you donate money and I didn't say anything but it, it pissed me off because it's like for one I haven't been a Christian since like 15 16 years old so like I've already said this to her a thousand times too like I'm a witch <laughs> I do witchcraft and I haven't changed I've been that way since 15 16 I, I didn't come out because I would have got my ass beat but I came out when I was 18 you know, I was living with her at one point when I was like 18, 19, and I told her, like, I haven't been a Christian since 14, 15 years old. Like, I'm a witch. I do witchcraft. You know, that's my religion, if you want to call it that. And for some reason, it still hasn't sunk in. I, I just don't think she listens. I really don't. She says she knows me, but I'm like, you really don't, dude. Because I've become a completely different person than what I was. Hell, even uh, five years ago, you know. But I wanted to raise my kid to where whenever they become... I'm going to wrap this up real quick because I'm running out of fucking time. I wanted to raise my kid to where when she became a preteen teenager that she can choose her own religion. If that's what she chooses to do. She could be an atheist, religion, or Christian, witch, Rasta, whatever the fuck she wants to be. Buddhist, I would have supported it. The only thing I wouldn't have supported would be if she was like a Baal or a Moloch worshiper and wanting to do dark art shit. That was the whole point I was making. Teach your kid morals without a sky daddy. Um... I can tell you this, there is going to be a response from the Satanic Temple. So whenever these Louisiana schools have an after school Satan program, don't get surprised, don't freak out because you asked for it and they responded. Um, but this ain't parental advice, man. If you, the only advice I, I can give is the advice of the atmosphere and the place that I grew up in and like I said I'm gonna do a full episode on my Christian upbringing um, sadly dude this fucking 30 minutes flew by dude I could keep going I was barely getting started um, I can tell you how it affected me and I'm gonna do an episode on it to go into like great detail of why I am the way I am that was just a taste, a teaser. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, though, about, you know, the Ten Commandments being written into law, that they can put it in schools and, um, Louisiana schools, you know. I disagree with it. I think it's fucking horrible. I think it should be separation of church and state. 
I do not think they should be cramming religion down students' throats. Um, and if they are going to, they need to just have a religion class like I did in high school to where they're teaching all religions. And let the child choose whenever they're old enough to choose, like as far as like middle school, I think middle school, high school, I, honestly, I think high school is a good point to start, if you're going to, to introduce your child into spirituality, um, which my child would have grown up around spirituality in general, because I, that's, that's all I read about is conspiracy, spirituality, ancient religion, ancient history. She would have been educated on all of it. Christianity. Um, let them choose. They're smart. I think around 12 years old, I think a child should be allowed to start choosing their spiritual path. That's just me. It might be different from yours. Like I said, as long as it's nothing dark arts or nothing, why do you, why do you care? Why are you worried about it? But uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Y'all have a good day. Sorry I had to rush. It's just... I gotta go to work. Sadly, I didn't really get to do this episode the way I wanted to, but... Hopefully it turned out alright. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Catch y'all later.